I'm Robin Farah. I'm from a company called Morello AI, which is an audio and music generative AI company, and I am the product lead. Yeah, so generative music as well as generative um, a, uh, audio is when essentially you've trained AI models on um, various audio things from sound effects to vocals to music. And then you can um, write a prompt and it can throw out whatever it is that you're looking for in the audio space, whether it's music, text to speech, sound effects and so on. So this company is actually a very, very young startup. I have been brought in as the product person. Uh, I am the only product person, which is very exciting, but it does mean that right now the team has been training these AI models and I'm brought in to basically figure out what is our product and who's it for. So right now I'm in the interview phase for the product market fit of interviewing everyone in various industries that use audio, from game developers to film producers to post productions to composers, and actually figuring out where are these pain points when they use audio and where can our product help. So to answer your question, um, whether this is for the end user or whether it's for a business, we're yet to find out. We want to figure out exactly where it's needed and then base the product around that. The dream scenario is that um, we can work very closely along creators using audio, using um, audio in any way, whether it's musicians, whether it's game developers, to essentially help them with their creative process and take away all the menial work that you do, like the admin, because it's very time consuming to find the perfect sound, to find the perfect music, edit it, cut it. So in my head, that's my perfect scenario, but whether that is what Morello ends up doing, I am not sure. So I do have to state that. <laughs> no, I have to be honest, on average, it's probably something like 0.5% are unhappy. Most musicians see it as something great. And most audio people, they see it that it's going to help them be more creative. It's going to save time. Um, particularly composers are quite excited about it because they see it as a tool they can use. The best way to describe it is um, way back in the day when MIDI was created and sound libraries for instruments, you stopped essentially using session musicians as much, but it didn't put session musicians out of work, but it allowed someone to sit at home, um, essentially create a drum part, create a bass line part using MIDI. And they see it in a very similar way that it's gonna save time, make things faster, where either they can put ideas on paper they still don't see that it will ever take away from live performances. It will actually take away from the human element. So they're very excited about it. But you do get that 0.1, uh, 1.5% that is scared, that's angry. Um, and I think it's just sitting down trying to have conversations and make sure we can uh, make sure it goes the right way for everyone. Yeah, I think it, as to me, like Black Mirror really puts all of things like that, like sci-fi to me, I love sci-fi. It makes people think like this could be our future, think about it and put uh, things in place that can't be that way. And you will always get people also doing it the way it shouldn't be used. Like we know with everything in life, humans are humans, some humans are not good. But yeah, I think we can learn from sci-fi. <laughs> I don't own the company, I'm not one of the founders, so I can only guide and say, look, these are things we should be guiding on. So. It is really great when you look at the ethics because it covers everything from like licensing, copyright, human ethics, and then sustainability. So looking at the ecosystem and AI is very, very energy um, consuming. So, you know, these are things that we constantly have conversations about of what ethically can we do to improve. And unfortunately, it also does mean that with startups, there are less resources that startups have. So I really hope that the bigger players um, that have more money that are working with machine learning are thinking about this too, because they're the ones that can actually afford to go the better routes, whereas startups have to make compromises to actually get, get there, get funding, and then be like, okay, we want to head there. But that's kind of where I am of being like, how can we do this and where and how do we have to compromise? I actually felt the complete opposite. I felt like all of us were very aligned, also because we spoke before, and they are very open to have conversations with people working in the AI music industry. The thing that kind of shocked me a bit was the, um, I mean shocked, but it was like, oh, we need to sit around a table and have these discussions. And I know from my side, I'm openly reaching out to these people to be like, what can we do? How can we work together? So we may not have just never met until today, which is where it's like, okay, so what are the next steps? How do we work together to make sure that 
how we're training these models is in a in a legal way and how can we work together to do this to make sure ethically it's right but i think we're all on the same page of ai can help support it can be a technology that takes mm -hmm. things forward and then also how can we work together so yeah no i think the copyright side to me is is really good i think it's there for a reason look i am also a composer as well in my free time so from an artist's point of view i understand why that's there and i like it um no, I don't think that that's limiting. I think it's more these conversations and I think the conversations that really need to be happening, which it sounds like um, Angel that you were just chatting to, who's working on like the EU's ethical side of AI is looking at that because to me it's more like governments and how they're actually looking at this with um, legalities when it comes to digital data and what's going on. And I think that's where it needs to come is from higher up and they need to start doing it now instead of like what happened with Facebook, where it was happening, what, like 10 to 15 years later, and they had to backtrack and our data was compromised. So to me, that's kind of where it is. And I think it's extremely important that that's there. And I'm very happy to be living in the EU where they are trying to think ahead instead of work backwards. It is very beautiful. I'm also super happy I can walk everywhere because initially I thought like, I was like, oh, I'm going to have to like go here and then do this. And I was like, oh, this is so walkable and it is so beautiful, so safe. And yeah, it's very lovely. Okay, so I'm happy you. to be here. <laughs>